Killer Rigol Live TV. Ayo. Bola. Bola. The press. The fourth realm. The friends of the family that are here. The imam. The cleric. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of you coming here. You know, my sister said just now that the daddy you to beat her and call her a lot. And that he, the younger ones, you are not touched. And I have to say to her that it's a lie. <laughs> I was touched. <laughs> daddy beat me very bad. <laughs> daddy was um, Daddy was a disciplinarian. He disciplined me many times. I'm lying. I can't forget. There was one time the driver came to pick me up from school. And he came with a taxi. And I said to the driver, asked, why do you bring a taxi? Where's the car? He said the car developed a fault. He had to take a taxi to come and take me from school. I said, I'm not going to enter a taxi. Go back home and bring another car. <laughs> so the driver comes back home to bring another car. And my father sees him, ah, where is the car? He said, ah, not over there. No, you know, the great taxi guy be able to go to your phone, the wooden taxi. Make him watch it. He might be more to a me. He might be. Father said, okay. He must have been making his best me. He said, okay. Over there, great one. So we go back there, let's go ferry. When the devil said to me that, that is that when you get home, that you want to see me, I said, ah, why are you going to tell that? <laughs> so I remember, I now go home, I had no choice, I had to go upstairs and I see daddy. And I remember my uncle, Uncle Bashiru, may Allah forgive him, if he has gone back to Allah now, Uncle Bashiru was there that day. I entered the room, my father said, you need to walk to school every day. You walk to primary school and walk to secondary school every day in the sun, in the rain. You are telling me that you cannot come back home in a taxi. Bye bye, woman in your school. Bye bye, you, the motto. He now took a belt. He gave me like 12 lashes. It was my uncle that saved me that day. He said, I me, I'm not no more. And I was saying, Daddy, I'll find my way to school. Am I a to be born? I'll find my, my way to school now. My school was in King's College, Lagos. So imagine from this place to KC. I said, I'll find my way to school. So for the next three days, I was going by bus, whatever. I'll find my way to school. After three days, my father called me. He said, How are you? He said, My dear, no. I never tried that kind of thing again. <laughs> and that was how daddy was. You know, he was a very wealthy man, but you know, you have to behave yourself. And if he had become president of Nigeria, he would have made sure that the government behaved itself. The job of government is to bring order and prosperity to the country. He ran under the slogan, Farewell to Poverty. I want to say to the incoming president, Ashwa Jibola Tinubu, that you are part of the you are part of the June 12th struggle, and you becoming president today is part of the success of June 12th. Democracy itself is June 12th. My father died for democracy in Nigeria. My mother, may Allah forgive her, Al Haja Kudura. I remember when I was in the University of Lagos Staff School, and I'll come back home from school and my mom will be lying down on the stool waiting for me to have sex and jam you to come back home. And when once you come back home we'll find mommy sleeping. We'll not be the one to wake her up. Ah mommy at today for that woman to now become a hero for democracy. You can see that it was not part of our plan. We never planned to donate our mother. We didn't plan to donate our mother to Nigeria. That was not the start. We are begging mommy that time. Mommy, come to America. Yes. Come on, come on. 
Just come. You say, I'm coming. I'll come next week. I'll come next week. I'll come next week. Then my brother, Jamie, he said, hmm, they come. Mommy will not come home. You have to go home and drag her out. That a bacha is going to kill this woman. What she's saying in the press, the demonstration, what she's doing, a bacha will kill this woman. He said, they can go back home, grab mommy, and drag her out. He kept disturbing me. You call me, you don't have her on the phone. Because they were living in New York, I was living in Washington, D.C. You call me. For one hour, they will break you. I said, come, build this. A bachelor will not kill mommy. What he can do is he might arrest her. He might put her under house arrest, or he might send her into exile. But he will not kill mommy. He said, this way, but I told me, but I lied. My, my, but then, but this man, my mom, my mom, And I said, if you are so sure that a bachelor will kill mommy, she's also your mother. Why don't you go home yourself and drag her out? The day my mom was killed, when the man called me to tell me that somebody in your family has been shot, and I called, I was trying to reach her. In fact, I was trying to reach her the day before. She was killed on a Tuesday. I was trying to call mommy on Monday. I tried like seven times. The number was in the no GSM then. The number was, the number was not going. The number was you dial two, three, four. 901800, 901802, 901803. I tried all those numbers. The number was not going through. Just came and said, How are you doing? What's going on? I couldn't reach her on the phone. So when she had been, when the man told me, I said, Who was killed in my family? He said, I don't know. Go and find out. So I'm trying to call home again. I can't reach the house. Nobody's picking. The phone is not even going through. There was no GSM. So I now called my brother in New York. I said, Somebody said that somebody has been killed in our family. Try to find out what has happened. He called me back in 10 minutes and he was crying. So when I heard him crying, I said, okay, so they've killed daddy. They've, they've killed daddy. He said, no, they killed mommy. I said, no, they killed daddy. He said, no, they killed mommy. I said, no, they don't, don't be confused. They killed daddy. He said, no, they killed mommy. And they don't, they don't tell you to go and drag this woman out. So, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. You know, we thank Allah that my mother died fighting for justice. And also, unfortunately, two years later, my dad also died on the same call. My mom died before him. She sacrificed her life. He was begging her to come out. To be serious about violent crime in Nigeria. My mom was shot in the head. She was shot, just like by a seven of She was shot with guns. They fired guns at her car. And one of the bullets hit her on the forehead. You see, a lot of Nigerians are dying. Bandits, terrorists, kidnappers. And in the Nigerian law, there is death penalty for those that engage in these activities. And the Nigerian government, federal and state, has refused to implement the death penalty. My mom was killed. The people that killed her admitted that they were the ones that did it. They are all working free today. If they catch a kidnapper or a bandit, the Nigerian government has refused to execute the death penalty. You are not killing criminals. Criminals are killing Nigerians and you are not executing them back. Now, if the law says that a kidnapper should be killed, death penalty, and the governors and the president refuse to sign a death penalty. They refuse to sign it. They are also the lawless. In the, the blood of Nigerians cannot be cheap. Look at me now. My mom was killed in 1994 or 1996. And you can see how the tears that still want to come out from my for me. So imagine a Nigerian that was killed yesterday or last week. How is the how is the family feeling? And then when the Nigerian policemen and the army go and risk their lives to apprehend these criminals and they now take them to court, the court finds them guilty and pronounces a death sentence on them, then the government says I cannot sign it. If I was kidnapped in 2017 and my brother, Jamie, may Allah bless him, was able to pay my ransom, not everybody can afford to pay ransom. If my brother did not pay my ransom, I will not be standing in front of you right now. 
How many Nigerians have not been able to pay ransom and they have been killed? And these same kidnappers, when they are finally arrested by the police, the governors will refuse to sign. We have in Niger State right now, like three days ago, in Niger State, they, they raided a village, they kidnapped some people, and they sent a video that if you don't pay ransom by tomorrow, you're going to start killing them. And we, the president has to work on this matter. Anybody that has been found guilty of kidnapping, banditry, terrorism, found guilty in the court of law, should be put to death. We have to put a stop to violent crime in Nigeria. If there is no, if you don't stop violent crime in Nigeria, there cannot be any economic growth. You cannot have people going to go and mine in a remote location where kidnappers can kidnap them. You cannot have people coming in the villages and then bandits are raiding them. So we have, to, we have to work on this matter. Without security, there cannot be any economic growth. We asked the president, my father ran under farewell to poverty. We ask the president to try their best and the government to try their best to improve the economic conditions of Nigeria, inshallah. And we also ask the we also ask the president, the new president and the governor to also do more for the, the, for the poor, for education and healthcare and infrastructure. We well, thank you guys for coming. I said it already too much. Thank you very much and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
Kilari Bon Life TV, Iconia Mulubo, Cocotong Bersha, Tisha, Yoruba Laruge.